Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. I'm with James. James is Recurve Archer of the Year. So he just came back from the Junior Nationals where he, I'm gonna say, shot the highest score overall to win overall best recurve archery at the event. So national records, one of Australia's best recurve archers. So James is working today at the shop, okay? So today in the shop, I want to look at strings. So this string here doesn't have any serving at the ends, right? This was a thing for Brady Ellison was shooting at a recent tournament and this was a thing. It was huge on social media. And I'm like, is this a thing? Is this gonna make you shoot better? Then, gas strings, there's another idea where if we didn't join up the, the loop and the ends here, it improved your accuracy. So this was another idea that people came up with, right? So my question was, does this, this, or the normal string make any difference to the results you see down the range? So should James be shooting this string, this string, or the normal string? So James made up these strings this morning, and he's actually tested it, okay? So he's tested it in our indoor range, so this is our indoor range here, and he's tested it outside, right? So um, I'm gonna tell you about those results, but first off, he's gonna shoot six arrows with the first string, six arrows with this string, and six arrows with the other string, so we can see the difference. And then we're going to discuss what the results were and you can come up with your own conclusions. Okay, so the first string James is shooting is the normal recurve string you shoot. Now what I look at with James from behind, so I just got back from the recent Junior Nationals with James, and when I stand behind James and watch him shoot, what I look at is his hand and how far his hand moves away from his face. It's a really good indication of how good the recurve archer is. When James is shooting really well, his, his hand stays really, really close into his face. So. Hopefully in these shots you'll see his, his release has been very, very good. Okay. Okay, let's go down there and see how those arrows are. So this is James's group. So 18 meters. Now, James, how old are you? 14. 14 years old. How long have you been shooting for? Four years now. Four years. And what poundage bow? 32. 32, 70 inches. The arrows are, have been shot so much that they've all worn out. They're, what are they? Uh, they're Pandaris ice points. So, Pandaris Ice Point Arrows with a spin wing vein, because yep. we've tried all the other veins out, and cheap ass knocks. Yep. Pandaris knocks. Pandaris knocks. So, these are the cheap knocks that are like a few cents each, right? So, this is James, and I'm like, James, I remember for a number of years shooting, right? So, he's always been improving, improving, improving. In the last six months, is that fair? Yeah. He's really picked it up, right? So if you think, well, how much do I have to train to get this good? It was years and years of training. I'm gonna say at a lower level, no disrespect. But in the last six months, he's really shot up. It's a huge improvement, um, coaching, and just so much dedication. But look at this group. Like, I can get my fingers around the whole lot. Um, 
like it's 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9. Six arrows, new string, um, on camera, which is a huge effort. And I'm just going to go into this. At the Nationals, when he just shot, James was winning, and he did win the Indoor Nationals at the Junior Nationals. He came second to Brock. Okay, so he was winning, okay? He was winning, and, it, and I said Brock was shooting. Brock's a very good archer as well. And Brock was up on the shooting line by himself. And I said to James, I said, do the same thing, leave it to 40 seconds and be the last person on the shooting line just to see how you cope with pressure. So James did that and he shot a 10, right? Part of doing stuff like this is putting you under pressure to get re ready for how things are in the future when you're under even more pressure on a bigger stage, more prize money, more rewards. You've got to kind of get used to it. James is amazing under pressure, right? It's just, it doesn't seem to phase him. So we're going to try out the next string because that's an amazing result. And we're going to just talk about his gear a little bit um, in this video. I know this is about strings, but we're talking about a bow which is $200 riser roughly, $180 limbs roughly, and shot the highest scores at the Nationals. And when I say highest scores, I don't even mean highest scores. If James shot in the under 18 category, he would have won. And I think he would have won in the under 21 category as well. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty certain he would have won. So no disrespect to the other kids. The scores James is shooting now are like world class. And that's complete respect to James and the people he shoots with because their whole level's all pulled up in James's coach. So let's try out the other strings and see what the results are. So the string James is shooting now is the twin string. So you make the serving and then you make the, the other bit of the serving separate. So the loop's separate and then the serving separate. So they don't join. So it allows flexibility at the joint. It's meant to be an advantage. I don't know if it makes a difference. I'm going to film James from behind. Because what's of interest to me is this shoulder point here. Um, staying down and I'm interested in a person's back moving. So... So when you see a good archer shoot, and uh, I've shot with James a lot, I look at the clicker, I uh, watch his arrow go through the clicker. When a person's shooting well, the arrow just flows straight through the clicker. And I've seen James in the past, no disrespect to James, but sometimes he struggles. And sometimes I've seen him make shots where it doesn't actually go through the clicker. And I'm watching his arrow, and next minute he shoots and didn't go through the clicker. And it's like, oh, that's gonna be a bad shot. It's like, this is normal archery, right? So when you see a person at their elite stage, it hasn't always been like that. It's been hard work to get here. It's been hard work on the form. So many hours of dedication. Like James shoots in the rain, he shoots in the cold, he shoots morning and night. So much dedication to get to this point. Now, that last shot, because we filmed it, James actually missed and went high in the target. Because I'm watching him shoot, I'm like, what? what happened? Because the shot sequence is different, right? Like James's arrows, because we're obviously filming this, they were like bang, 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 and the arrows were touching. I'm like, this is amazing. And then the shot sequence was all rubbish. It was a shit shot. James knows it's a shit shot. And you get that result. And that's completely normal. Like, Completely normal. To have a round where you shoot 60 perfect shots is amazing, and that's what you're looking for. Um, you're looking for consistency, but the normal shot like that, I'm happy it occurred. I mean, I don't want it to occur, but it's normal.
six. Yep. Right, so let's go up and check where those arrows are. Right, so I'm up here at the target. This is the group. So he's got three exits. Amazing shooting, like fantastic shots. Um, nine, nine, like good shots. But then we've got this one up here, right? So this is like gonna damage your neighbor's car shot. So it happens to the best archers in Australia and that's why it's very important to have like a big target and that's why we can have the target at the top because James might have missed. Now, on this shot, do you know what happened? Uh, yeah, so my front shoulder wasn't in the correct position so it made my clicker go off early and I just released it. So you weren't actually aiming in the middle when it went off? Uh, I was aiming about here when I was coming in to... Ah. And this is the thing, when you shoot a clicker, your body's trained to go release when it goes click. So sometimes, sometimes when the clicker goes, it's not deadly in the middle. And you've got to train your body to, to be expanding while it's in the middle. So, but your body's going, as soon as I hear the clicker, shoot. Which is the same thing as a back tension release aid. A back tension will go off, but you go off sometimes when you don't want it to go off. Same thing with the clicker. Um, and that's when sometimes you can get these shots. But it's getting that consistency and that's why you've got to train so much. So this is not a bad result. Is it better than the first result? I, look, these shots are clearly better. These ones, it's not a lot of difference. Like this one I don't even include, right? So it's not that I can really tell a difference from this to the other string. So now let's try the ones with no serving around the end, the Brady Ellison string I'll call it, and see how that goes. Okay, so we're down to the final string. This is the string with no serving around the ends, right? So it's James shooting live, so no serving around the ends. Now I'm gonna say about James is shooting here. So on the weekend he shot, shot about a 275, so averaged about a gold. So what you're seeing him shooting here in the indoor range is amazing scores. Like a 59 to start with and then like two nines. That is a world-class score. Even in the men's it's a world-class score. So, and it's in front of the camera, right? So, which is, I think, a lot harder because people are watching you, watching what you do. Amazing shooting. Like, I got back from the junior nationals where I was sitting here watching James shoot, and I'm just like, amazing shooting. And I think it's part of the support, support you give your kids or support you give people, and you say, look, really, really good. Like, I think a lot of people concentrate on negatives and like this is where you need to improve but there's a whole bunch of here about concentrating on the positive sides, about how things are improving, about your shoulder position, the release is improving, how things are improving that way people feel better about it and they improve and they want to work to get even better. So. Bit about James's gear while he finishes this off. He's shooting Viv Fivix Velator stabilizers. I did a review on these stabilizers. I love them. They're cheap stabilizers. They absorb a fair bit of um, vibration. And I think the reason he's got these stabilizers is the color. I always say a fair bit about color because it seems to be a major driving force in people choosing archery gear. The arrows, Pandaris Ice Point arrows, um, cheap, ineffective, um, inexpensive arrows. 3.2 diameter, so same diameter as an X10, and they are, I think, around 200 odd dollars a dozen. Um, that's Australian dollars. Getting amazing results with these arrows. Compound and recurve. Um, Let's go down and see how the arrows are. I just really like watching people shoot 
um, in the whole form because it takes so long to get that good. Okay, last end, I can get my fingers around the whole group again. Now the group is not, I'm gonna say, not as good as maybe the other two strings. However, I think the group is pretty similar because I can get my finger around the whole lot. It's just the group's a little bit low and a little bit to the right, all right? So does it give me an indication one string's better than the other? No, I'd say they're pretty much the same. Now James shot outdoors at 40 meters to check the different three strings because I said, go and shoot 40 meters and see which string you think groups better. And you found? Um, they all basically group the same, just, just different spots on the target. So he found that some, uh, some strings shot slightly lower. Now I don't know if that will be through speed because if you've moved your knocking point down a little bit when you set it up, then it will move the position of the sight on the um, thing, on the, on the target. But overall, what I'm more interested in is about accuracy. And basically, just from these initial tests, it looks to be all the same. It doesn't mean to say you shouldn't try these different strings out, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't try shooting like the different strings over a number of weeks and shoot scores because you should. James has got three strings now. So I would suggest that you should go and shoot a whole bunch of rounds now with the different strings and see if you shoot a better score with one of those strings. Because you well may, because it may requires a one or two percent change to just move you up a little bit more. I'm going to say overall it still gets, as far as I'm concerned, it still gets back to the archer and all the dedication James puts in, and I'm gonna say the support of your family, the support of your coach, because a fair bit of work goes in from your dad um, to get you to places, to come up and train with you. Um, James shoots with his dad morning and night, his sister also shoots. Really good thing, archery is a really good family sport to get the whole family involved. So, thank you James. I think they were fantastic arrows, and thank you for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.